Well, if you fish, you're probably looking for a way to offer some type of lure that the fish have never seen before. Well, this young man here with me has figured that out. Carter, you actually hand make your lures, is that right? Yes, sir, I do. I actually start from a block of wood, cut it out with a bandsaw, and then put all the hardware in, the weight, the lip, paint it, and go try it out. What got you interested in building your own lures? Well, I've always liked fishing, so I've wanted to try and customize my lures. And then I found out that I can make my lures and had a big interest in that. So then I come out here one day and start making lures. Then I really enjoyed it. I've noticed that you've got a whole pile of lures over there. Some lipless crankbaits to deep diver crankbaits, topwater baits to jointed swim baits. You've kind of started working in a whole different avenue of crankbaits. You can literally fill a tackle box over there with hard baits. I could. Yeah. And I've started coming out with my favorite actions and changing the lip size, see what actions I like the best and made more of those. All right, show me step one, step two. Let's, get, let's go through the process. Well, I start out with a block of wood. All right. And then I cut that out on my bandsaw. When did you see this passion start to manifest with him? Well, he always did take an interest in, in woodworking as far as family members that were doing it. And he started watching YouTube and realized that you could make all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. He asked out of the blue for a bandsaw for Christmas. You know, you ask your kid, what would you like for Christmas? I'd like a bandsaw. He was eight years old. We thought it was a little different request, but you know, if he asked for it, we thought, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, I'll be with him. We make sure he's safe. Yeah. And it really has taken off from there. All right, so now we kind of see the shape that it's starting to take. So I guess now, obviously, it's kind of squared off and, and not rounded and doesn't look like a fish. The next step is to really make it take shape, right? Next step is to carve the chamfer lines. What type of uh, equipment do you use for that? Well, I use a carving knife. Okay. And a belt of sandpaper. Not only lures. As a matter of fact, it didn't initially start with lures, right? It was what? What was he making before that? I think his first thing he cut out a wooden knife, um, and then he started with plywood cutouts. Kentucky's. Um, yes, with Kentucky was a big one. Someone uh, would offer to give him a little money for for a cutout, and next thing you know, he was reinvesting back in his equipment. Have you ever fished one of his lures? I have. I was with him when he caught his first fish on one of his own lures yeah. and took a picture of it, so it was a good memory. That is very cool. He loves to fish, right? And he, he loves does. to play golf. He does. He does both. And the patience for both uh, has, has been very clear. It, he takes a lot of time, and we'd rather have him doing that than a lot of other things. You're a young face with an old soul. You'd been making persimmon head clubs 100 years ago if you'd been alive. I would, with my lathe. <laughs> his patience and his desire to perfect his craft of making lures and woodworking is pretty amazing. He spends a lot of time in that garage <laughs> and he never seems to get tired of it. When you get started on one of these lures, you really want to get it finished. You ever have your parents call and say, it's time to come in, enough's enough? Yep. You work on it tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. Next, we're gonna put in the weight, which is this, this bullet weight that will drill a hole in the belly of the lure and then put the bullet weight inside the lure. Okay, tell me a little bit about this bullet weight and why you're adding that on there. It'll be a little bit easier to cast, and whenever you cast it out, and it'll land up like right like that. Okay. So whenever it starts going into the water, whenever you start reeling in, it'll have a good action and be it straight up in the water. Okay. And I noticed that you've already got your lip kind of cut out. The angle that you've put on here, is this for deep diving, medium diving? Why have you decided on this angle for this lip? This lip and this angle is a little bit more of a shallow dive. Okay. Because the waters around here, the creeks, they're a little bit shallower, and you don't want to be bumping into the bottom all the time or messing up your lure. So this lip is bigger, so it has a bigger action, a better okay. action, more appealing to the fish. Man, it's all about making that bait wobble, isn't it? It is. Let's see you put that belly weight in there. So we, we know he likes making lures. What else has he made that, uh, that mom likes around the house? Probably my favorite thing that he's made are these planters on the porch. Okay. He made those during quarantine for me. I was wanting some and it took him about a week okay. to make both, but that's probably been my favorite thing that he's made. Nothing can put a price on a kid literally setting down and laying out and designing it in his head and sticking with it and going through right. to the end and building it. That's a great gift. Yes. There you go. Now it's flush. 
you almost drilled that the exact right depth. You've done that before, I can tell. So you knew exactly how far to go. Now you've smashed it in, and now it's time to secure it and put some type of a compound, which you're saying baking soda and super glue. Just is regular it? baking soda and thin super glue. Where did you learn this idea of baking soda and super glue? Well, I watched a little bit of lure making off of YouTube, and I found out that baking soda is a good filler for lures like this. You can learn everything on YouTube, can't you? You can. <laughs> How long does that take to cure? Oh, it's instantly cured. Oh, really? Okay. Hey, I like that. No wait. Yeah. <laughs> that special super glue. Now we can sand that down with our belt sand and get it all smooth. Well, the cool thing is, is that woodworking, I know he loves golf, and fishing, those are all lifelong hobbies. When you say lifelong, he started really young and he can do it forever. Absolutely. We're really excited for him. He's got a lot of things to keep him busy and, and we just can't wait to see where it goes. That thing puts a little bit of a burr on there. How do you get that off? Maybe a little hand sanding will get that off, make it look all nice. Takes a little bit of patience, doesn't it? Takes a little bit of time, yeah. So, but you know what? Fishing takes a little bit of patience too, right? Yes. And I bet you, like any other craftsman, you're probably looking at that lure coming through the water and thinking about how you're going to slightly change that next one, right? <laughs> Does that happen to you much? Yeah, I change the little size of the lip, maybe, if it doesn't have the action you want. What all types of fish have you caught on your lures? I've caught some pike, smallmouth, largemouth, and even some panfish. That is really cool. You've got that thing looking like a lure. You could probably catch a fish on that, but you can up your game a little bit from here, right? I can. So what, uh, what else can you do to make this even look more like a bait fish? Well, now we're going to go to painting. Okay. We're going to put all the details in, make it look like whatever fish you want, a rainbow trout or a bass. Well, I'll tell you what, it, it's fascinating to see his age, what he's already doing, and I can't wait to see what he does when he gets older. I know he said he has interest in becoming a mechanical engineer. He says. We do, we think uh, from what we can see, he's gonna put that to good work and it'd be just right for him. I don't think sitting behind an office all day is gonna be something he's, uh, he's ready to do. How pretty is that bait? Well, I'll tell you what, pick a couple of lures you think we got the best chance to catch a fish, and uh, I think I got a spot that we can go and see if we can't turn this into a big largemouth bass. What do you All think? Right. Well, Carter, I was really impressed watching you make your lures. Thank but you. Today we're going to put them to the test. So we're out here at a farm pond. You brought a handful of lures that you made, and we're going to come out here and see if we can't catch a fish. Let's do it. All right, so you're going to start off with this one, it looks like. It kind of looks like a, like a rattle trap or something like that. Or lipless. And I'll, you want me to throw this one? Yep. Let me get tied up and we're going to go down there and see how these things work. Let's do it. They look great. Here we go. Man, they are sitting right in the moss. Your lures work. They do. They vibrate good. You know what? They In this vegetation, I'll slow them down, let them come to the surface and restart them again. The bass love them. Nice fish. Uh oh, here we go. That is awesome. First bass of the day. Well, Carter, I'll tell you what, this whole process of seeing your passion for lure making and to come out here and, and to show me how this bait works, how you designed it, how you weighted it, and then to go out here and make it all work and catch a fish, pretty awesome. You are truly an inspiration, man. Thank you. I, I think that is super cool what you're doing. I can only imagine what type of wood products and lures you're going to be making when you, know, when you hit 16. Yep. It's amazing what you're able to do. Look at that fish in and catch another one. Let's go release it. <laughs> 